the entrance antiphon. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. Good morning. Let me stick this back on where it belongs. Great. It's good to see all your smiling faces. I'm presuming you're smiling. Let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. We pause for just a moment to put ourselves in the presence of God. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you speak with authority to help us to live good lives. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us how we're really supposed to live and love one another. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin, bringing us all to everlasting life. And now let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, Pour into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you've nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen carefully to the readings. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. Four. Who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is just in all his ways making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in in all all his his ways. ways.
May the Lord be with all of you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them in the synagogue, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. I once heard a lecture. I was in this class for a a year, almost a year, down in Montgomery, Alabama. And there was a general, that's kind of a big wig in the Air Force, and he was giving a lecture. And he walked up to give the lecture, and as he walked up, he missed one of the steps. It wasn't defined. Here you can see the steps a little more clearly. But sometimes you can't see it, and he he kind of stumbled a little bit, and he, oh, geez, we're going to have to get rid of that step, he said. Well, he was being facetious. He was just teasing. But you know what? A short time later, they were making plans to remove that step. Holy cow. And he said, that's not what I wanted to do. Now, he is a general. That's a big wig in the Air Force. And he has authority. And so when he says something, it happens. And sometimes that's a good thing. He's making a lot of big decisions. But he says, I have to be careful what I say because some people might take that seriously. Now, obviously, if I'm saying we're going to send 100,000 troops off this way, or we're going to take over this, or we're going to move this command, or we're going to deploy, we're going to do training, people have to listen to that. And by golly, they're going to do what he says. But sometimes he's just teasing. So he said, I need to talk and debate with my, uh, some senior officials, some others that I trust, some trusted people, and make a good decision. But I have to realize, I have to remember, I have a lot of authority. Sometimes authority is given to us because of our position. Maybe your parents or teachers or, or some politician or some boss that you have, they have authority over you because they're paying you some money to do a job. Sometimes authority is not given to us, but it's earned. I, I would go to Ron Colley High School. I went to all the high schools when I was working with religious vocations. And I go to the high school and I give a talk on uh, vocations. But I come into the class early and I'd listen to the teacher talking and then the teacher would introduce me. There was one teacher who was actually a priest. He didn't want to teach and he wasn't very good at it. And he was constantly raising his voice. Okay, let's settle down here. Sit down, sit down, pay attention now, quit playing, do this. Okay, we have to... And he'd raise his voice, and the kids started raising their voices too. He had no control over them. He really didn't have authority. But there was another person there, Brother Norman, an African-American, pretty young brother, uh, very small, very slight in stature, rather short. And he spoke with authority. He would just speak very softly and say, all right, it's time to sit down, take your desk, we have a lecture. And all of the kids would sit down and take a seat and they start to listen, because he spoke with authority somehow. Jesus is one who speaks with authority today in the gospel. He has authority over even unclean spirits. He can drive out a demon. If he can do that, he has authority in our lives too. Don't, doesn't Jesus have authority? If you feel like bullying someone or hurting someone, And Jesus has authority. No, don't do that. If you want to be one of my friends, one of my disciples, if you want to be like me, you're not going to hurt someone's feelings. If you want to be like me, you are going to share what you have with others. If you want to be like me, you want to be one of my followers, you're going to have to live the way I tell you to live. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Be generous. Be patient. Be forgiving. He has authority. He talks to us that way. And because of his authority, we take it very, very, very seriously. And we do what he wants us to do. Isn't that great? And if we do what he wants us to do, we'll be happy. The world will be a much better place. Okie dokie. Let's stand now and present our petitions, our prayers, 
to our Creator in heaven. We pray that all of us might be really tuned in to the authorities in our lives, our parents, our teachers, our bosses, those that really do have some authority, the ch church leaders, the Pope, and we might listen to them and put into practice what they're guiding us to do. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have hurt us in one way or another, that somehow they turn from their evil and we learn to forgive. We pray to the Lord. And what else shall we pray for today? Okay, we pray for a cure for the uh, COVID-19. We pray for all of those who are suffering illness, that so they might recover. We pray for the researchers who are trying to find a cure for this. For all of this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for always hearing our prayers. If it is your will, grant our petitions, please. We ask this, of course, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for the preparation of the gifts. Very good. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. With her worth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Good. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human family, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, all of the saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol with you with all of the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all of the clergy, with the people of God everywhere. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Remember especially Ben Nelson, for whom this Mass is being offered. Please bring Ben and all of the departed into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Jesus told us that we're supposed to call God Father, so at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety and distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share with each other now a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Michael, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A communion antiphon. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. If you're going to be receiving communion, we would ask that you remain standing if you're going to receive communion so that we know who's received and who has not received.
Let's all stand as we now continue to pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. We ask this, of course, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass has ended. We'll go in peace, glorifying God by our very lives. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, okay? You guys are doing a great job. I'm impressed with the school opening, everyone staying safe and doing the right thing. God bless you all.